And we're now recording. Okay, so this is our last regular week. We're almost done, folks. In fact, a week from today, we're finished with the final gem. All right, I don't really need to show this side anymore because I'm pretty much done with everything I need. Okay, so you know what to turn in for the test. Again, the test is on Thursday, not on Friday. Okay, our test is Thursday this week. So 4.9 to 5.5. All right, so today I'm gonna go back and review the first two exams, do some of my questions, and then if there's time left over, which I think there will, then you can ask me questions on here. Tomorrow, test three and four. Okay? Now, I know you haven't had the fifth test yet, so uh, my suggestion, I suppose, is don't even look very carefully at um, the first part of today or tomorrow's lecture on a review of exam one and two and review of exams three and four. But once Thursday is over, okay, then go back and review what we have. I mean, that's how you study for the final exam. Okay, so we're reviewing for the final exam. <clears throat> Again, I didn't want to change the day of the exam. The alternative was I could have given you the exam today and then go on from there, but I didn't want to do that since I already said everything. So we're going to review first two tests today, and I'll do some of my own review for chapter five. Tomorrow, three and four, exams three and four, and again, review. And Wednesday, as promised, you can ask me anything that you want. Thursday's the test. Friday, I'll go over exam five, and then we're finished. Okay, so final exam is on Monday. Again, please notice it's a week from today, 8, 10 to 10, 40 a.m. So we're not starting at our usual time of 9, 10, start at 8, 10. That's all we're gonna do, no questions and answers. So if you have any questions, bring it up beforehand or come to my office hours or send me an email. Uh, so to study for the final exam, just look over the previous exams of which you can pretty much just look at the video from today, tomorrow and Friday for a review of the final exam. Okay. Again, most likely I'll pick, say, three or four questions from every exam to construct a final exam. So 15 or 20 questions for the final exam. They'll be very similar to previous questions. Okay. Uh, you don't have to submit any homework. There's no homework to submit for the final exam. Um, you know, you're used to submitting tests with homework, but that's not going to happen this time. Just submit the final exam, and then we're done. Okay. And so that's basically what's going to happen. Um, you may see me going kind of fast for a review of the exams. Uh, that's purposeful, I need to get through it. So I'm not gonna be going through it as if I were lecturing on it. I am going through it as if you've seen it, you've already seen the exams before. And of course, since it is you know, taped, you have a chance to you know, pause and rewind and fast forward and as much as you want. So I'll be reviewing, but I'll be reviewing kind of quickly in order to save time for the first two exams and then tomorrow three and four and then Friday exam five. Okay. I don't plan to send out a separate video. You know how I usually send out a separate video for the exams. I won't be doing it uh, for exam five because you know I'll just be doing it on Friday. Okay. And I, again, I'm not promising I'll get you back your individual test by Friday. I'll get it over the weekend, but you can start studying for the previous exams before the final. And sometime during the weekend, you know, I should be able to give you your exam five so you can use that to study for the final exam. But you'll have the solutions anyway. So even if you don't get your individual tests back, you still should be able to uh, review all the solutions. Okay, so uh, any other questions before I start? Let me check the chat. Okay, so anybody that joined, yeah, go ahead and put it down. Let's see, Philip got you, Kuziefa got you, Antonio got you. Okay, uh, any other general questions about the exam? final exam and so forth. So we're all done pretty soon, folks. A week from today, in fact, 10.40 a.m. will be all done with uh, Math 251. Okay, so any other general questions? <clears throat> when do we submit the uh, homework? We submit the homework on Thursday, our usual, that you submit 4.9 to 5.5 on a day of the exam. The only thing to watch out for is this week, the exam is on Thursday, not Friday. We're used to having it on Friday. So, Submit the homework on Thursday. Okay, any other questions, please? Let me check the chat real quickly. All right, so I'm gonna start off by reviewing old exams. You don't have to pay close attention to this, You know, just kind of look at it half-heartedly. Uh, when you really wanna start boning up on this is maybe the day after the test or Thursday or immediately after the test is maybe the way I should say it start Thursday afternoon. Okay, so going back to the first test. 
So test number one, and in case you're missing a sheet, I'll show you quickly uh, what the questions were. I wrote my own comments on the far right. I don't have to show you those, but uh, I just want you to be able to see the test in case you say I lost the test. But remember, technically you can always go back on Canvas, uh, just check back and see what all the questions were. So this was the first test. And so, yeah, I will pick three or four questions from this very test, maybe not the very same question, although I'm allowed to give you the very same question, but just tweak it a little bit. Okay, so those are the questions. <clears throat> Number one asks for f of x minus f of a divided by x minus a. So f of x is one over x, f of a is one over a divided by x minus a. And then to simplify this, multiply top and bottom by ax. If I distribute here, that gives me a. If I distribute here, that gives me x. So I have a minus x divided by x minus a times ax. a minus x divided by x minus a is negative one. So negative one over ax. Number two, uh, you want a function that goes through three, negative 10 and 11, 30, the line. First, I get the slope, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. 30 minus a minus 10 divided by 11 minus three, that's 40 over eight, which is five. Okay, then I do the point slope form, y minus y1, y minus 30 equals m 5x minus 11. Clean up the algebra, y equals 5x minus 25, which is f of x. Number three, f of negative three and f of one and f of four are all zero. That means f of x is some constant times k, uh, x plus three, x minus one, x minus four. Okay, now they tell me that f of zero is one. That means when I plug in zero, the answer is one. So one is equal to plug in zero here, zero here, zero here. So k times three times negative one times negative four. One equals 12 k, k is 1 12th. So the final answer for this one, f of x is 1 12th, x plus three, x minus one, x minus four. Number four, f of x minus four minus six means move four to the right and six down. Number five, f of x is x squared minus six x minus one, g of x is three x minus seven. They ask for f of g of x, that is f of three x minus seven. So I put three x minus seven right here in parentheses and also right here in parentheses. So 3x minus 7 squared minus 6 times 3x minus 7 minus 1. Clean up all the algebra. 9x squared minus 60x plus 90. Okay, number 6, 2 to the x, e to the x, and 1 half to the x. They all go through the same point, 0, 1. 2 to the x I have in green. e to the x, e is like 2.7, so it's a little bit above to the right of the y-axis, which means it's below on the left side of the y-axis. And then one half to the x is the mirror image, mirror image of two to the x reflected across the y-axis. Seven, f of x equals c a to the x. You're given the point one, two, plug in one here and two for y. Remember y is f of x. So two equals c a to the one. Three comma 16 means put a three here, 16 here, 16 equals c a cubed. Divide both sides by two. c a is the same as two. C's cancel out, a squared is eight. A is radical eight or two radical two. So two is equal to C times A, two radical two. Divide both sides by two radical two. C is one over radical two, radical two over two. So final answer F of X is radical two over two times two radical two raised to the X power. Number eight, Y equals three X plus one over two X minus three. Find the inverse, so switch around X and Y. X equals three Y plus one over two Y minus three. Multiply both sides by two y minus three, two x y minus three x equals three y plus one. Get all the y's on the same side. So I subtract the three y, add three x, two x minus y, uh, two x y minus three y equals three x plus one. Factor out the y, divide by two x minus three. So y equals f inverse of x is three x plus one over two x minus three. Number nine, take a natural log of both sides. Once you do that, x minus two comes in front x minus two ln three equals ln seven. Divide both sides by natural log of three. x minus two equals ln seven over ln three. Add two. So x is two plus natural log of seven divided by natural log of three. Punch it in a calculator, about 3.7712. And finally, 10. Find the cosine of inverse sine of theta. Uh, inverse sine of x. Call this theta. Theta is inverse sine of x. 
which means sine of theta is x over one. And we're trying to find cosine theta. <clears throat> so from your trig, Sokotoa, okay, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So I set up a right triangle, here's theta, opposite hypotenuse. Do your a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? Pythagorean theorem, x squared plus, temporarily call that y, x squared plus y squared equals one. Subtract x squared, take the square root. Y is radical one minus x squared. So we're trying to find cosine of theta. So cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that would be radical one plus one minus x squared divided by one. Final answer is radical one minus x squared. Okay, so that was the first exam. I know I'm going fast, but this is not like I'm lecturing for the first time. You've seen it all before. You've seen the test. You have even seen the solutions before. So it should all be here. So I feel justified in going kind of fast that this should be not like, oh, I've never seen this before, right? In fact, you've seen, you look at it quite intensely uh, for exam one, which is a long time ago. We're just trying to review all of this, okay? Again, my recommendation is don't even look at it until after the test on um, Thursday. So that was the first test. I'm about to show you the second test, but let me check the chat real quickly. Okay, so somebody just joined. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> right, so yeah, anybody who joined late as usual, please put your name in the chat. Okay, so test number two, okay, and same thing, you know, don't look at it carefully until after the test, but study it like crazy before the final exam next Monday. <clears throat> uh, again, a reminder, um, I'm supposed to tell you, I know it doesn't really make a lot of sense. I'm supposed to have office hours all throughout the rest of finals week. So Tuesday through Friday of finals week, I'm available by email from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Okay, so 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., technically 8.10 to 10 o'clock Tuesday through Friday by email. I know it's kind of weird because we've already done the final, but I'm supposed to say it. So there I said it. Okay, exam two, you should already have this again, but just in case I'll show you here. You don't really need to see all my red stuff on the side. So I'm just trying to show that to you there. Move that over. 10, definition of derivatives, okay. All right, so we get that and check the chat. Okay, Alejandro, I got you. Wally, I got you. Well, later I'll get you. Okay, so number one, find the slope of the secant line joining one F of one and 1.01 1 .01 F of 1.01. .01. So 1 comma 1, 1.01 comma 1.01 squared. Slope is 1.01 squared minus 1 divided by 1.01 minus 1. Punch it in the machine, 2.01. Number two, the limit as x approaches 0 from the left is negative 1. Here it is. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right is positive 1. And f of 0 is 0. So the graph should look something like this. <laughs> Number three, limit h approaches zero, radical nine plus h minus three over h, multiplied by the conjugate of the numerator, which is radical nine plus h plus three, top and bottom. That looks like a minus b, a plus b now. So nine plus h minus nine, divided by h times radical nine plus h plus three. Nines cancel out, you have an h on top, that h cancels that h, you have a one on top. So limit h approaches zero of one over radical nine plus h plus three. Now I can plug in zero. 1 over radical 9, which is 3, 3 plus 3, 1, 6. Number 4, one of those epsilon delta, prove using epsilon and delta, limit uh, as x approaches 3 of 4x minus 1 is 11. So given epsilon greater than 0, find a delta greater than 0, such that 0 less than absolute value of x minus 3 is less than delta, implies absolute value of 4x minus 1 minus 11 is less than epsilon. Okay, scratch work. So absolute value of 4x minus 1 minus 11 less than epsilon means 4x minus 12 and absolute value is less than epsilon. Factor out the 4, divide by 4. Absolute value of x minus 3 is less than epsilon over 4. The name of the game you might recall, I know this was a long time ago, is to force this to look like this. This looks like this. Now that tells you what to let delta be. Delta should be epsilon over 4. Let delta equal epsilon over 4. Now the formal proof. <clears throat> if 0 is less than absolute value of x minus 3, Less than delta. Then after this, you can drop the zero. Change delta to epsilon over four. You're just retracing your steps. 
multiply both sides by four, stick to four back inside, absolute value of 4x minus 12, and then rewrite it like that. So absolute value of 4x minus 1 minus 11 less than epsilon. Okay. Number five, determine the value of c so that the function will be continuous everywhere. Okay. You got two here and two here. You basically just plug in two, the technique, plug in two for x, not for c, plug in two for x, you're solving for c. So plug in two, c times two squared, the top part, equals 2c minus 3, the bottom part. And that's easy. 4c equals 2c minus 3. Subtract 2c, divide by 2. c is equal to negative 3 halves. In number 6, the original was like this. Limit is x to infinity of x squared over radical x to the fourth minus 4. Divide top and bottom by x squared. Divide by x squared. And underneath the radical, x to the fourth, right? X to the fourth under the radical is the same as X squared outside. So limit X approach infinity, the top is one. The bottom is radical one minus four over X to the fourth. And now when X gets big, that's one minus zero. One square root of one is one. Okay, number seven, use intercepts and end behavior. Okay, first thing I notice is that we have an even function. And we factor X squared times X squared minus four, which is X squared times X plus two, X minus two. Okay, even function, again, means symmetry with respect to the y-axis. The zeros are zero plus or minus two. Okay, if I plug in a number between zero and one, uh, zero and two, like one, one minus four is negative. If I plug in a number bigger than two, such as three, might be easier to plug in here, three positive, 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 positive. Okay, so that tells me on this side, it goes up. And since I have symmetry with respect to the y-axis, we can just copy that over there. Okay. Number eight, at the time we didn't know how to do any shortcuts. And so you still need to know how to take a derivative from the definition of derivative that still may be part of the final exam. <clears throat> so here you could not use a shortcut of x to the one half and use the power rule. So y prime is limit h approach to zero, radical x plus h minus radical x all over h. And the rest is sort of like this, multiplied by the conjugate of the numerator, which is radical x plus h plus x, top and bottom. So the top becomes x plus h minus x. The bottom is h times radical x plus h plus radical x. H, uh, sorry, x cancels out. You have an h on top. That h cancels that h. You have a 1. Limit h approaches 0 of 1 over radical x plus h plus radical x. Now you plug in 0 for h, 1 over radical x plus radical x, 1 over 2 radical x. And yes, side note, if you took the derivative of x to the one half and clean it up by the shortcut, that's what you would get. Okay, you want the derivative at nine comma three. So I plug in nine, one over two radical nine, one over two times three, one six. Then I use the point slope form. Y minus Y one equals M times X minus X one. And ground rules, we said you're allowed to stop. Okay, number nine, uh, when we actually took the test, this threw off a lot of people, which I don't think it should have, but now you've been forewarned in case I ask you that question again. Okay, so you have sine x at the origin, find the slope of the secant line joining 0.01 f of 0 0.01 at the origin. At the time, we didn't know how to take a derivative. We now know the derivative is cosine x, right? But we didn't know that at the time. So what do you do? I picked a close by point, 0 0.01 f of 0 0.1 and find the slope of the secant line. Okay, so you punch it in the calculator, sine of 0 0.01 minus the sine of zero, which is zero, divided by 0 0.01 minus zero. You have to be in radian mode, 0 0.999983, which means a good approximation for the slope of the tangent line is one, right? So sine of zero is zero, by the way. Check that. Yeah, I'm in radian mode. So sine 0 0.00, oh, oh, sorry, point. 01 divided by 0 0.01. So you can see how close to zero it is, right? 0 0.9998333. Okay. In fact, in many instances, you would just say it's one. It's so close to one, we would pretty much say that it is one, right? All right. So use the origin as a point. Some of you use the point 0 0.01 sine of 0.1. The origin, you can't get any better than that. So y minus zero equals one 
times x minus zero, or just y equals x. And finally, 10, find a derivative using a definition. Okay, be ready to know how to find a definition of the derivative. Okay, so in other words, on the final exam, if I say, you know, find a derivative using a definition of the derivative, and you just immediately put 4x cubed, you're not going to get very much credit, maybe none at all, right? Okay, now you can use that as a double check. So you should say to yourself, oh, yeah, I know the answer is going to be 4x cubed. So let me see how I can get it. <clears throat> all right, so f prime of x. Limit h approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Put it on your cheat sheet if you didn't already do it. Okay. Uh, to save time, I think I worked that out before. It's x to the fourth plus 4x cubed h plus 6x squared h squared plus 4x h cubed plus h to the fourth minus x to the fourth all over h. Okay. You can do that by multiplying x plus h squared times another x plus h squared. Okay. Or some of you might recall it's something called Pascal's triangle, one, one, one. The outside of the triangle is always one. Any inside part, you add the two numbers above it. So one plus one is two, one plus two is three, two plus one is three, one plus three is four, three plus three is six, three plus one is four, and so on. And this gives you the coefficients of one, one, four, six, four, one. Okay. And the exponents, <clears throat> x goes x to the fourth, third, second, one and zero, h reverses h to the zero, one, two, three, four. Okay, x to the fourth cancels out. And then this one, this one, and this one, and this one all have a common factor of h. Factor out to h, parentheses, four x cubed plus six x squared h plus four x h squared plus h cubed divided by h, h cancels out. So limit h approaches zero of four x cubed plus six x squared h plus four x h squared plus h cubed. Okay, and then now you can just plug in zero for all the H's. That's gone, that's gone, that's gone. Final answer is 4X cubed. And yes, now that we know uh, the cat is out of the bag, as double check, oh yeah, the derivative of X to the fourth is indeed 4X cubed, just as I thought it should be. Okay, so that's that. All right, so that was the first two exams. Again, my recommendation, don't even look at it until after Thursday's test, uh, so you can review uh, after the test Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, until our final exam on Monday, okay? Uh, I'm gonna go back and I took some requests for previous problems, but otherwise I'll be done pretty quickly. What time is it, 9.35? So my formal part will be finished in maybe five minutes, in which case, if anybody wants to start asking me any questions in preparation for the test on Thursday, you may. Okay, and just, just save us some time. And if not, we're gonna finish early. And same thing is probably gonna happen tomorrow. Okay, when I review test three and test four, it take up maybe 25 minutes, which is what's happening now. Okay, so there we go. All right, so, and some of these problems we already did, but a request for 5.313, 5.313, h of x is the integral from one to e to the x of ln t dt. We're back to test five, reviewing for Thursday's exam. <clears throat> okay, again, put away in code storage, the review of exams one and two, until after the test, then you can look at the video for that. Okay, and I'll review test five on Friday after you've already taken it. And that's exactly how you should study for the final. Okay, this is fundamental theorem of calculus part one. It's supposed to be constant on the bottom, variable on the top, it is. You don't care about this. Just put this right in here and then multiply by the derivative of what's here. So I go ln e to the x times the derivative of e to the x, which is also e to the x. And we know that ln and e cancel out, so x e to the x final answer. Okay, 5.443, I think that's what it said. Yeah, <clears throat> 5.443. Integral from zero to one over radical three of t squared minus one over t to the fourth minus one. So what you wanna do here is factor the bottom. The bottom factors in t squared plus one t squared minus one very conveniently, these guys cancel out. So I have integral from zero to one over radical three of one over t squared plus one. That's my inverse tangent or arc tangent. So arc tangent of t from zero to one over radical three. Inverse tangent of zero is zero. And inverse tangent of one over radical three, we did that before, it's pi over six. The trick was to divide top and bottom by two, you might recall change that to sine over cosine. 
Okay, I'm gonna still have that over. Yeah, remember I did this kind of trick uh, a while back to find inverse tangent of radical three, make that radical three over one, call that sine over cosine, divide top and bottom by two. And that gave me theta is pi over three. Do the same thing for one over radical three and you'll end up with pi over six. So the answer to that one was pi over six. Okay, and then uh, 4.9, number 45, and maybe that was the last one that I had. Okay, so I'll be done in just a moment, folks. So if anybody wants to start putting stuff in the chat for possible review, you may do that. 4.945, F double prime was e to the X minus two sine X. F of zero is three, F of pi over two equals zero. <clears throat> okay, so you're at the second derivative level. Go back to the first derivative level, I integrate e to the x minus two sine x dx, which is e to the x plus two cosine x plus c1. Remember, you can always check your answer by differentiation, right? What's the derivative of this? Derivative e to the x is e to the x. Derivative of two cosine x is negative two sine x, and the derivative of c1 is zero. Okay, now I integrate again to get to f. So the next step, I integrate this. So integral of e to the x plus two cosine x plus c1 dx is e to the x plus two sine x plus c1x plus c2. Okay, now they tell me f of zero is three. That means when I plug in zero, I get three. Put a zero here, zero here, zero here, and the answer is three. So three is the answer when I plug in zero, e to the zero is one, plus two sine of zero is zero, c1 times zero is zero plus c2. So three equals one plus zero plus zero plus c2. Subtract one on both sides, that means C2 is two. So I replace this with two. So f of x is now e to the x plus two sine x plus c one x plus two. And now I use the fact that f of pi over two is zero. That means when I plug in pi over two, the answer is zero. Okay, so put pi over two here, pi over two here, pi over two here, two here, zero here. Okay, it's a little bit clumsy. Let's see, sine of pi over two is one. So I have e to the pi over two, plus two plus two, so that's four, and pi over two times C1. Okay, so I throw this over to the other side, subtract e to the pi over two, subtract four. So I have negative e to the pi over two minus four equals pi over two C1. Then you multiply both sides by two over pi. Okay, it gets very messy, but anyway, C1, is two over pi times negative e to the pi over two minus four. So final answer, f of x equals e to the x plus two sine x plus two over pi times negative e to the pi over two minus four x plus two. So that's my final answer. Okay, so I'm now done with what I was planning to do today, folks. And I do see something in the chat, I think so. I will do more tomorrow. There's time. Let me just mark off where I left off. And let's see. 5.329 and 35 was asked for. Okay. So let me see what I can do about that. 5.329 and 35. And again, anybody else wants to jump in with questions in preparation for the test on Thursday, you may. Because if not, we'll just end early. 5.329. Okay, 5.329. I'm gonna go from one to four. 2 plus x squared over radical x dx. Okay. So 2 over radical x is 2x to the negative a half. x to the 2 minus a half is x to the 3 halves. Remember, this is like x to the half. Okay, so 2 x to the one half divided by a half, 
factors divided by half plus x to the five halves divided by five halves. One to four, clean this up a little bit. That's four radical x plus two fifths x to the five halves from one to four, paren, paren, minus paren, paren. Plug in one, maybe plugging in one is easier. Four root one is four. One to anything is one, so four plus two fifths. Plug in four, four radical four plus two fifths times four to the five halves, means square root of four is two. Two to the fifth is 32. Okay, so four times two is eight plus 64 over five minus four minus two over five, which is four plus 62 over five over one times five times five, 20 plus 62, looks like 82 over five. And unless I made an arithmetic error, that's what we have. And remember, I do give partial credit. If you got your ideas correct, but you just made a mistake somewhere, that's fine. I make mistakes all the time. So you'll get some credit. Okay, 35, same section. I'm going to go from one to two. V cubed plus three V to the sixth divided by V to the fourth. DV. So one over V plus three V squared DV. Okay, so that's natural log absolute value of V plus three V cubed over three, right? Three V cubed over three V cubed. Okay, plug in three, LN of absolute value of three is LN three plus three cubed minus plug in one, LN absolute value of one is one plus one, element of one is zero. So natural log of three plus 26. Looks like my final answer. Okay, and let me do my focus thing there. All right, so check the chat again. 5.441, okay. 5.441. And anybody else wants to get in, go ahead and do so. And then grow from where to where. Zero to radical three over two. DR over radical one minus R squared. Okay, so this is inverse sine. You might remember the derivative inverse sine of R, and maybe not comfortable with R, <clears throat> would be one over radical one minus R squared. So inverse sine of R from zero to radical three over two, which is inverse sine of radical three over two minus inverse sine of zero. Sine of zero is zero, therefore inverse sine of zero is zero. Okay, if you've forgotten how to do this, you can typically call it theta. So inverse sine of radical three over two equals theta means sine of theta is radical three over two. You're probably not comfortable with radical three over two, but you should be more comfortable with its companion, which is a half, okay? Cosine of theta is a half, okay? So remember on a unit circle, if one of the coordinates is radical three over two, the other is automatically plus or minus a half. So I want the X corner to be a half. That will force the Y corner to be radical three over two. And it looks to me like a 60 degree angle. So theta is pi over three, okay? So final answer is pi over three for this one. 
Okay, and let's see. I think I've caught up with the chat. Okay, so anybody else wants to put something, I'll do my focus thing again, but otherwise we're done. You can ask again tomorrow. So uh, while I show you this, I'll blab a little longer. Same thing tomorrow. I'll start off by showing you a review of exams three and four. Again, don't really look at it carefully until after you take the test, but at least you've got it. Okay, and again, technically you have all the videos from before, but it might've have, might have been a while or you have to dig for it. So at least you kind of just look at it here. It might be more compact for you. And there we go. Okay, uh, any other questions, please? Let me check the chat, otherwise we're finished. And tomorrow will be somewhat similar. Wait just a moment. Okay, and double check again. I may have repeated myself. Let's see, Philip, I got you. Kuzaif, I got you. Antonio, uh, Wally, Alejandro. Okay, so I'll get you later when I look the chat later. Okay, anybody else, please? Okay, I see nothing and hear nothing, so we're done. All right, so have a good day, everybody, and we'll see everybody tomorrow. Okay, bye, everybody. Have a good day. See ya. See ya. Bye.